I thought I would show some of Pea Valley. It was first season stars. We didn't have a lot of money um, in Atlanta. Actually working on the new Tyler Perry studio stages, and they're great, very modern. Um, and he has so much property. Um, it's an old army base um, that he, um, <laughs> uh, we would need uh, exterior sets. Some I didn't use, like there's an old um, place for, uh, like he moved a 50s diner there. Um, we did use a trailer park. I mean, what he's built there is crazy, um, but, and charged a lot for it. So <laughs> he needs to make his movies, so it was okay. Um, but, so Pea Valley is, um, a show set in Mississippi in a small town that's seen better days. Um, showrunner Katori Hall is a, an acclaimed playwright. Uh, she's the only woman, and certainly woman of color, to win an Olivier Award. I mean, just really amazing. Wrote the script for Tina that's on Broadway. And she had never worked in television. Um, but got this series off the ground, and uh, she wanted it gritty. The proprietor of the strip club, it mostly is about these people whose lives are, you know, they are all strippers, their backstories, and the proprietor is Uncle Clifford, who goes by a she pronoun, who's a fantastic actor. Um, and she wouldn't have had the money to have fancy lights like you see in strip clubs today. And of course, we are in the age of amazing LEDs and stereotubes. And uh, so what my gaffer, John Ladd, um, was able to do was fit fancy LED lights in the housing of old park hands. And Lico's were all, uh, you know, LEDs, they just looked, if you looked up, it wouldn't look like a fancy club. We had a couple moving lights that we would never move on a shot because Katori would fire me if I tried. No, but it wasn't the look. But if there was some new blocking and we didn't have time to bring a ladder up because the stage was quite high uh, and we had to bring from a, you know, far or farther away, we would just swing one of the moving lights around and hope the actor hit that. So um, what was amazing was all directors were women. There were a lot of women and people of color. We really tried diverse crew. Um, my camera crew, uh, there were 11 of us, including um, I, although I did the pilot, and then we were lucky enough to get a wonderfully talented young cinematographer who's done a lot of Tyler Perry movies and so happy not to, Richard VLA. So he was there um, in Atlanta and a uh, person of color. And um, my camera crew were 11 people, six of whom were women and women of color. And it was really amazing. Um, my key grip, Ray Brown, I will just say that he's not 25, so you know there is an ageism problem out there. In case, um, and his daughter was in his grip crew, uh, Peyton, really wonderful. Both our dolly grips were African Americans, and so we really tried. Um, I had a hard time with John Ladd finding diversity. Uh, the, the few women electricians in Atlanta. Uh, were busy, but I came up electric and was like, John, I cannot do this show unless you find a woman. And we did find someone, um, Ellie Evans, who's now with him um, uh, as a part of the crew. And she got really great with the DMX, you know, on her iPod if we were out in uh, locations, whatever. So the club is called The Pink, and um, you, you will see. There's a lot of pink, but as things progressed through the episodes, we did bring in a lot, a lot of colors. Alexa Mini, 1600 ISO. Katori wanted it gritty, 
had I been film, I would have shot, you know, 16, Super 16, but we were shooting digital. Um, and stars did not require 4K, so we were shooting 3.2K. And um, Panavision, usually I go to Dan Sasaki if I need special lenses, but he was so jammed, and I was um, working very nicely with Guy McVicker out of Panavision Hollywood. And uh, so we went for detuned lenses, all those primes that you didn't want, I, <laughs> that weren't primos. You know, the super, you know, standard speed, super speeds, you, you name it. And we got uh, the, all the anti-glare um, coatings off. But we had three different levels of primes. Uh, so there was a subtle, medium, and extreme um, detuning. And I started off using more of the extremes <laughs> than I ended up later because I mean, you'll just see some things are so, they're really, you know, anything flary, blown out, Katori loved. And I'm like, oh my God. But um, anyway, she was happy. So, um, also uh, the use of, of uh, diopters, right? Right. So, um, I don't know if you know what uh, spot diopters are. If you look, a Vantage in Germany has them and strip diopters. There are all these funny uh, filters that you can use to screw up your image so you can do everything in, in production and not post. And um, so I'm going to just show one thing. Uh, you'll see this girl. She's come to town, very mysterious, and it's like, talent night and they're looking for new strippers and she ends up winning um, but there's this we wanted a fractured look to what's going on with her because she's flashing back to what just happened what happened was there was a flood uh, where she was living and she was in an abusive relationship and you should see the series but you know we think the guy who was abusing her is dead but he comes back in episode Five. Spoiler alert. Oh, well, this was, this was for a season, so okay. it's okay. Um, but uh, so we found, a uh, guy found this cracked diopter. I said, I'll take it. There's, you know, one, and, and it just was great. And just working with these funny filters, we even used lens babies. We did and, and ever, anything and everything to screw up the images. <laughs> so it's gritty. But all right, so we'll show this little part, and um, the um, so you'll see there's like something that goes desaturated. That is where uh, I was using uh, Tiffin Promist One. Remember those <laughs> white Promist yep. white uh, with electrodes. And that was the filter doing that wacky stuff. That's just a streak filter. We couldn't afford anamorphic. So these are the other strippers ending up on the OG. Uh, not happy, but so. Um, and if time permits, I will show some absolutely amazing pole dancing. There's this little clip on the next clip. But um, what I do want to 
show you is how it started with the pilot. And uh, Katori was very worried about sh uh, the male gaze, usually strip clubs, uh, women are exploited, and especially what's been on television or films, uh, where the camera is. Um, we did have some nudity. She never wanted the camera to um, linger too long in body parts. We wanted to show these women were athletic, which you'll see this one is absolutely incredible. They were all um, pretty athletic. We did have uh, doubles that we'd have to film halfway up the pole and then bring the double in and, you know, finish some of the dancing and, you know, save the close-ups and alternate back and forth because it's pretty energetic. I don't know if you've ever tried to pole dance. Um, um, it, I tried to get on the pole, and I'm pretty athletic. <laughs> I think I made it two inches. No, well, what happened was I had my birthday uh, there, which is so much fun. That, you know, you, um, it was uh, the morning. It was great. Um, so you know, you have a safety meeting before each day, and the first day D was announcing blah blah blah, and it's Nancy's birthday, and a hundred people singing, and I mean it was just great. And I tried to get up on the pole. It was not funny, and I, I said, "Get rid of whoever videoed me trying to get up there." So, but um, anyway, it was a great feeling on set. The director of the pilot is a woman who uh, is from Canada, Karina Evans. This was also her first epis episodic television. She comes out of music videos, Drake music videos, so I knew her work. And uh, she came in with this incredible lookbook. And I'm just, I'm gonna show you some images um, because what we did was, sh she had this lookbook and uh, so it's the, Let's see. That's going to be the str the one where you can scroll down. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll turn the lights off. So, so we just looked at what she picked, and it was often from TV stills, commercials, music videos, whatever, and talked about the palette. And so this first episode, which 101, was a lot about pink, because the club's called pink, and then the flashbacks would be more like the bottom, where the desaturated. That's where, uh, when the girl's getting abused. I shot slow-mo, a lot of smoke, and again, this Tiffin white promise, number one, and flary and smoke and stuff like that. Um, okay, she would do the little palette at the top, and. Um, so there were like a hundred pages of this, and we printed it out large and put it in the director's office so that all the incoming directors could, fig you know, see what was going on. And uh, Richard and I would. Okay, so that I guess so that was just some of them. And then I'm just showing things from the transition from to production from what her ideas were. You can keep going. Um, what sort of diffusion is this other than the street filter? Or is it just the lenses? The lenses were very flary. Uh, and I did use an occasional, um, well, classic soft, sorry. <laughs> I owned them, so it was like, oh yeah, we can use my classics. Uh, but they, they had such a great skin tone and um, that was the other thing. It was very hot, and it was supposed to be Mississippi, and so we didn't overdo um, any powdering, let the skin reflect beautifully. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I had a great time. The actors were terrific. And um, we had a great production designer. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah, you can't, I gotta get some better stills. They're all blown out. Um, Wait, and if you go to the next one, okay, so there's the club, which is the fantasy world, uh, and then there's the funky part of town where 
there is no color and it's really uh, depressed and uh, there's going to be a casino they're trying to build also not it's first season so you, <laughs> you don't um, but um, that's Uncle Clifford um, at the top. And uh, oh, we had to build a, a jail, which thank God it was a build. We weren't supposed to build. It was not uh, in the budget, but thank God, because I had like seven pages a day, and three cameras in this little jail. So anyway, uh, that, OK, so this was back to the lookbook. Uh, Karina put in Lens Baby, so I said, sure. And, <laughs> sure, well, why not? <laughs> uh, whatever. And you'll see the, you know, it's flary, and then this is from production, so with some changes. And there's that funny spot diopter that just distorts things. And uh, I just had a good time uh, doing everything in camera. Um, so the only time we had VFX um, <laughs> outside, so I used a lot of gold as the time went on, too. Uh, we got away from pink. Um, they were starting to build a housing complex. All right, so this is um, a still from the, just from the locker room where everything is more lit and it's not as fanciful and very little color. So. I don't know why that slate's there. Um, <laughs> okay, and what else do we have? Okay, so some of the dancing. So again, it was, uh, and I just wanted to show this because this image had been in the lookbook and we didn't have a location yet. Oh, wow, well, it's sort of cut off. I think you have another still, but oh well. Anyway, um, we found a location and I kind of matched to what <laughs> Karina wanted. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, so that's always fun to do. Um, and this was uh, from our jail set. That was episode five and there was no room. Like she's hitting a white wall. I was seeing over the set, but you know, we just smoked it up and it, it worked. Um, and this was a very wide lens on the guy, and then I used a macro on the eye, and that is one of the few F VFX that we did, just marrying it together. And that's the bad guy who came and found her. At, uh, and kind of scary. Um, so, do we have time to show this second clip? This sure. Okay, we'll just show a little. This this dancer Mercedes. She's like the main OG in the club, and uh, you can turn some sound on, I guess, maybe. So she, now you can turn. That's the mother who, she's never come to see her daughter, even though the daughter gives her money to the church where the mother is a singer and wants to be a preacher, but it's very it sexist, yeah. So anyway, you can also zoom to the very end. Oh, yeah, no, back up a little, back up a little. Um, so Mercedes played, um, she's actually a dancer, and all right, so this is back to the girl who won the contest. Now, the reason I showed that is because the scream and the singing uh, we wanted it that way, and editorial actually cut it the way we wanted it. <laughs> so, so that was all. Um, uh, I took one person from LA, uh, 
Dave Comites, Steady Cam, and so this is his work, and uh, a woman named Je Janice Min, who some of you know, uh, who's doing really well as an operator. She wasn't that experienced at the time. I found her in Baltimore and convinced her to move to Atlanta to be a local, and she's really been doing well. So um, it had great instincts. Um, so that that was all great, and um, so Mercedes, who she's now at the church, um, was actually a dancer, and we had a double for her. And that shot you saw where she just drops down the pole, she wasn't supposed to do. It was supposed to be the double, but she did it. And so there were, there, not only were we like shocked about how great she was, but that. Uh, you know, production almost had a fit because of <laughs> in insurance reasons, but she was good. So, so basically, that that's it. Uh, these scenes, uh, again, you, if you saw in the church, the windows are going berserk, uh, and that was those crazy lenses we used. Um, yeah, if you're talking about the the Panavision standard speeds that Guy had in Hollywood. The yeah. medium and extreme. The right, extreme. and some super speeds, too, as well. And then ultra, we, we used ultra um, primes. Ultra speeds ultra, or ultra primes? Ultra speeds. And um, for the dancing, we did switch to zooms, except well, Steadicam didn't. And so we had one 11 to 1 from Panavision that was detuned, but when we needed three cameras, which we did for these, all these amazing scenes uh, on stage, it was always a problem because the, the sub-rental of that other 11 to 1 never matched. So I would have to occasionally put on a smoke filter, that's a different filter, S-M-O-Q-U-E, just to match. Uh, we did have a DIT, but we were working so quickly that we didn't always have time to get the lenses quite right. But, um, Does anybody have a, a back in front? Let's wait for the mic. It's going to come back to you. In still photography. Or not. I'm sorry. But, oh, sorry, go ahead. You're, you're loud still enough. Still photography, it's always a challenge when working with multiple ethnicities and different skin tones in terms of color correction. How do you handle the different skin tones uh, working with this or in post or do you use different filters? No, I mean, it, you know, it's actually uh, such a pleasure to work with a range of skin tones. You know, it get, can get really boring, all white people, for sure, um, lighting them. So, no, uh, Katori wanted, and you can't really tell because this is like, I don't even know where I got the materials, <laughs> but um, it's a dark show and she wanted it dark and her t term was Delta Noir. She wanted it to be, to don't light dark skinned people with too much light with direct, you know, hard light, uh, a lot of reflected light. Um, and the skin tones were amazing. I mean, I didn't have any. So it any an issue. Yeah, but this was kind of a moody scenario. Yeah. No, it, occasionally, if it were some scene, I might have to net uh, one of the bright people down. You know, just There was one white girl dancer, and the rest were all different shades. Um, it was great, yeah. Um, but, you know, good question. And, yeah. Next, uh, I got somebody on the aisle back there. And then Hi. we'll come up front here. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Um, for, I mean, so beautiful. I'm such a fan of that dark, saturated uh, color and, and work. Um, very inspiring. I'm just curious. You know, you mentioned how y you kind of used old fixtures but put LEDs in them because they had that really strong saturation. Was there a particular fixture that you found yourself gravitating towards as far as like a, a key or because there's all that really beautiful... Um, uh, short lighting and stuff on them. I'm just curious if there was a particular direction you found yourself reaching. Um, well, we used a lot of the tubes, and then ETC uh, makes the um, 
Lycos that are LED. Um, the fixtures inside, what the hell were they? Whatever we found that fit. And I mean, if they weren't on, you'd see they would, were LEDs. If they were on, you wouldn't know. So um, little, uh, uh, whatever I could find, and uh, you know, why I also still like to use for now, you know, tungsten. So in certain locations, I would do that. And then, you know, HMI as well. So it was a whole mix. And uh, we had a good dimmer board op. And again, this woman, Ellie, when we went out, uh, was just a whiz at um, doing everything on her iPad. So I was lucky. It was fast and furious and hot, very hot. And you had a question. I don't think I would have changed anything. I mean, yes, it would have been nice to have more days. Uh, fortunately, the pilot, we had 12 days, which was a miracle, um, but generally eight. Um, and, uh, you know, full on hour episodes. Um, so what happens in season two, and I didn't go back, it's hard. Just we have to talk about when, you know, being a DP, I was there for, Five and a half months. You guys are much better than I am at being away from home. Um, I just uh, don't want to do that that much, you know, unless it's an incredible show like Game of Thrones or, you know. So, uh, you know, I thought, oh, God, I think I've done enough pole, da you know, pole dancing. Um, but um, what happens is more money comes in, and so... Uh, Richard stayed, and, um, you know, he would call me and say, you just won't believe what's going on. Anyway, they did, they were able to make it less gritty because there's more money in the club, which fit than the look, and he did not stay with the Panavision lenses, the detuned, so whatever. <laughs> That's what happens. And it made sense for whatever was going on in season two, which just showed. And he did a great job. Yeah. Rob, I'm going to move on to you and throw the ball into your lap now. One more question. Was there one? Yeah. yeah. So I was curious, in the first clip that you showed, we're jumping back and forth between seeing the club and abuse. Um, and I think there's a you know, there's a very well understood cinematic language of flashbacks being, you know, a little more washed out, right. slow motion, diffusion filtration, and all of that. And we had all of that here, but that's also present in the present, if you will. So I was curious if there was a particular approach you took in shooting those two scenes to be cut together in visually differentiating them or were they were they the same approach? Well, we were handheld in the flashbacks, and again, with heavier filtration and uh, lens-wise, um, you know, primes, the same primes, but I, I just added more smoke and more filtration and slow-mo. So is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and we really were not too handheld on the poles. Generally, it was steady cam praying. You can't tell the way because of how they cut. But it also, it seems intentional that as she's going into these flashbacks, that there's the image is breaking down That's right. on the pole dancing side, so it slides into the fractured flashback imagery. Right. So it's, it's deliberately kind of melding. Melding, and also because we fractured her face and, you know, in the actual pole dance dancing, you know, so it's already fractured. She's, we don't know. She, it's a mystery. This is 101. So 
we don't know where she came from or, or what. So with the flashbacks, we're getting little glimpses. Thank you. Thank you.